You're listening to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. Welcome back to Where You Live with Gene and Tony. We have uh, Brooks, who's on line two, and we'll be with you in just one moment. Uh, we are following a story we want to hear from you on as well today. Uh, a legislator in Texas is stating that uh, instead of HOAs foreclosing on its members for non-payment, they ought to work something out and just uh, take their stuff uh, as a way of paying <laughs> it's off. It's kind of an alternative form of an payment, alternative, right? Yeah, and oh. uh, you, you got to hear this uh, to believe it. And we want to hear from you today, too. The number, Tony? 651-289-4488. And we're, of course, broadcasting live from the Concierge Landscape Studios and brought to you this hour by Extreme Exteriors. Uh, well, uh, Brooks, you've been waiting patiently on line two. Good morning. Good morning. How are you doing? Good. Good. Yeah. Now, oh. you want to tell a, a story about life in an HOA, huh? Oh, it's an absolute nightmare. I, I grew up with one having a lake home in the family, but it only was like 18 people. You can't go too far, but it's funny. Our country trying to get along. Good luck if you can't make 18 <laughs> people get along. Oh, yeah. Then I moved into my first place when I was 25, and it was uh, 150 people in the association and a board of directors and a management company. And uh, they decided it was time for new decks because they wanted it to look nicer and whatnot. And in the rules and in the covenant, uh, that was supposed to be their responsibility. However, they didn't budget for this, so they had no money. Mm. But they wrote a check for $240,000 for the contractor before they ever even brought it up to the owners. And I had just put on a maintenance-free brand-new deck, and um, that didn't matter. You had to have a matching deck. These decks Mm -hmm. were only uh, four feet out and about nine feet or eight feet wide. So they were puny, and they charged sixty-eight hundred bucks for these things. Well, okay. to each However, homeowner, to each homeowner, you're saying. So, that was a, right. Excuse me, Brooks. That was a special assessment to each homeowner, sixty-eight hundred dollars. Yeah, and okay. guess what they gave us for uh, pre uh, foreclosure notice? Uh, they want their payment in full in three weeks, or they're going to start foreclosure proceedings on our homes and uh, lawyer fines which, of course, they're hiring the lawyers with our association dues. Yeah, so this and is an association you're still with? Um, you're still I living there? I just got out of it. I, okay. I just got out of it. I got divorced, got rid of the place. Okay. It, wow. It was, I would never buy in an, in an HOA again in my lifetime. I would rent first. Wow. Okay. Let um, me ask this, too. This is in Minnesota. Is that right? That's absolutely okay. correct. Okay. All right. All right. Boy, that is a bad story. Okay. I mean, and here's the here's the kicker of the whole deal. Uh, the board members, I wanted to do something about it because there was a vote previously, and it passed huge that they wanted control over the decks so that they would pay for them, maintain them, change them when they felt like it uh-huh. and such. And um, <clears throat> it passed... Uh, by like a landslide, like seventy five percent were in favor uh, of the homeowners yeah. taking charge of the okay. decks. No, no, of the uh, the association. I see. And the original association was written that way. It just wasn't perfectly clear. Yeah. Uh, to someone who doesn't yeah. read legal use. Now I'm educated in business and entrepreneurship. Okay. All right, Brooks. We're gonna we're gonna uh, talk about this a little bit. Um, and I really appreciate your your bringing Thanks up this story. This, this is what causes HOA syndrome. In people, I think. I, I, th- I think that there's a couple keys here. Uh, first of all is uh, the fact that uh, uh, Brooks found out that HOA living was not meant for him. And, and, that, right. and that's, and that's, uh, and that's Absolutely and that's legitimate. Great. That's and, right. And uh, that, um, that is something that not everybody comes to the realization. Yeah. They instead want to continue to uh, fight against this process, this um this organization called the the Homeowners right. Association. Right. So he found out it's not for him. That's the best thing that he could do. That's right. The other part, it's significant. He said it was a large landslide uh, a vote. Seventy five percent of the homeowners wanted this, and so well, well, is that what he said? Yes. Uh, originally, he said that 
it was a landslide vote that they wanted the association to, have to take the, on the maintenance and the control. And to have the but control. He, but he didn't say there was a vote. He, in fact, he said there was no vote approving this deck project but if or the, the special assessment. But if the uh, if uh, again we'd have to take a look at the we need more details uh, the, about of this. the governing documents. Right. If a lot of times uh, the governing documents do give the uh, association the ability to uh, to move forward with certain but projects without without uh, getting the vote from other homeowners. Don't most documents say that for a special assessment to be assessed, you need a certain majority of all members and, uh, to agree to that? A lot do, but some not some, all. Some don't. Wow. Okay. So I and again, that is that is the crux of the matter, is that it with an HOA. Know your documents before you get into know, it. Know your documents, but in this case, majority of the homeowners said, you know what? We want uh, we want the HOA to be responsible for this. So when they're saying we want you to be responsible, they're saying we're willing to accept what uh, what it is that you're going to sure. you're going to do sure. here in taking authority. Sure. And they took authority and they said we're going to change them. Um, you know, we didn't talk to Brooks about the fact that he had done work uh, beforehand. Right. We would have uh, asked the question: Did you talk to the association before, before you did, before that you did work. it? Yeah. Right. That would yeah. have been interesting. Then the to other know. part of his story was they demanded payment in full. It sounds like with very short notice. Yeah. But n- let's say we take his story at surface value. Okay. It's not a good way for an association to operate, to just sl- slap a large special assessment on each of its owners without consulting the owners. It's not a good idea for them to have no flexibility in payment for yes. this large this large special assessment. And if it's, as he said, that the members did mm-hmm. not have input into this, that's not a good way to operate your homeowners association. Well, yes, you're, 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 you're exactly right, because uh, the uh, thing that balances this out is the fiduciary responsibility that the board of directors has in uh, trying to uh, maintain and understand what the wishes of the majority are. And, yes. and you're right, um, you know, I've seen responsible associations that'll have a large assessment. Yes. Uh, that'll say, uh, it's a $6,000 assessment. We're going to begin work in a year, and we want to begin to have payments there you uh, go. over time. And so there we'll have uh, a There's third of it now. There's other ways to do it. Yeah, yeah. And, and, you, and, you, and, you spread that, and you spread that out. Uh, that is being more, that's being more responsible right. with folks. Right, right. I, I agree. Well, let's... Let's take a look at uh, this uh, next uh, article. Folks, I'd love to hear what you think of this. <laughs> and this is a Texas legislator who says he's got uh, a new solution uh, for HOA foreclosures. The article is in the Dallas Morning News uh, this last week. It says, to save houses from HOA foreclosure, Bill would offer up what's inside. Lawmakers considered an unusual solution Monday to homeowner association foreclosures. Lose the furniture, but save the house. Representative Ken Paxton proposed a bill to the House Business and Industry Committee that would help homeowners pay late dues by offering up some of their property. What do you think about this? He says the reality is other creditors have to deal with that, Paxton said. It does not eliminate foreclosures but provides some intermediary remedies. Association representatives backed the notion by a payment plan, just not that one. It would would create an administrative nightmare, said Roy Haley, a real estate lawyer, representing the Texas Community Association's advocate. Okay, let me make sure I understand. He's really suggesting an alternative form of payment. That's right. So I don't have the cash to pay you my association dues, but here, I have a plasma I, TV, a TV. <laughs> that you could accept in, in lieu of my dues. That's yes. what he's talking about, I, isn't it? Yes, yes, he is. Uh-huh. Well, then I have to agree with the representative from the Community Association's Advocates that uh, that would kind of be a payment nightmare. What, what, a, what a nightmare. Uh, you know, how about, uh, how about, uh, how about uh, well, uh, my family's got a farm, so we'll give you three dozen eggs uh, mm. a week here. Mm. Uh, you know, or uh, it's 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 crazy. I gotta tell you, 
well, here's another personal story. My dad was a veterinarian in South Minneapolis for many, uh-huh. many, many years, and he often took goods in trade for veterinary services, especially from the students at MCAD. He got lots of lots of paintings, original paintings. He got some original photographs. He got homemade uh, loaves of bread, uh, and he would do that in exchange for veterinary services. Well, and, but he uh, was a sole proprietor, so it made it a little easier. Sole proprietor is yeah. yeah, a little bit yeah, different yeah, than a yeah. homeowner, uh, a homeowner association. Let me ask this: Why don't you have a garage sale and put your plasma TV and all your belongings, uh, sell them, or sell them on uh, Craigslist, and then use that cash to pay your homeowners association? Yeah, the the the, the, u- the unit that we use uh, here for most <laughs> commerce is called money, yeah, and 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 that is what people that's what people are expecting. <laughs> I, th- this uh, idea. Uh, that the legislator believes that this is a way to uh, to hold off foreclosure. Oh my! I mean, what again? Again, what a nightmare would and it be it, to to have a TV and a dining room set and uh, and everything else? Where will you store that stuff? And then the association's responsible for selling it for cash. The association representatives even said they backed the the idea of a payment plan. I mean, they we all want flexibility in the payments. Uh-huh. Just not in the legal tender, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Oh, exactly. Uh, it, and you know, it, what is interesting in this article? There is another uh, state representative who came out and uh, chimed in, and I don't think made anything any better. Uh, committee, <laughs> Gee, go figure. Yeah, c- uh, representative Bert Solomon uh, also issued what it said in this article. What was a self-proclaimed Annual rant. <laughs> uh, he said, since property management companies seem to be running rampant, we don't even know how many there are in the state. We are reaching now because we can't get anything passed. Uh, and, and, so, and it's com- the property management companies running rampant that are yeah. preventing him from passing legislation in the state of Texas? That's what the, the indication would be, wow. isn't it? You, you get the idea that yeah. if you are... Uh, that it is uh, the management companies. Is that what he's saying here, um, folks? We're I'm I'm thinking. Uh, where's the reality <laughs> check? You know, where again, where is again, again. There's no acknowledgement of the fact that property management companies work for the homeowners association, take their direction from the homeowners association, and merely advise them on policies, procedures that have worked in their experience in the past. Yeah. Correct. Oh, the exactly. board of directors is in charge. Yeah, th- this idea that uh, Ken Baxson said he thought that this was a good idea because he said the reality is other creditors deal with that all the time. But uh, Mr. What's Pax- he talking about? Mr. Paxton, uh, yes, other people do repossess TVs, but the people that repossess TVs are the people <laughs> who gave them to someone who on loaned credit. the money, that's right. Uh, you know, that's right. Or your car your might car be repossessed. Possessed because... The collateral is the car, and that's yes. the loan. Yes. People. In the association, what's the collateral? It's the home. The home. Yeah. And that's what they do. Yes. You know, uh, there is uh, another uh, smirk by another uh, representative, and I kind of <laughs> like what he said. He said, I'm a cynic. He said, but uh, he said, I'm thinking of going into the indentured servitude <laughs> business. Well, this, there was another uh, committee member who suggested committees, community service as a way to repay debt to the homeowners yeah, association. Is, is that something? That's you, where the indentured servitude comic came from. You know, let, let's talk about this more. we got to take one more break. But when we come <laughs> back, let's talk about some of these different uh, ideas that are being thrown out. What do you think about someone working off uh, their uh, um, what they owe the association in uh, work? Uh, what do you think of them uh, giving their TV and their uh, personal property? We'd love to hear from you. <laughs> 6 five one two eight nine four four eight eight we'll take one last break and we'll be back for one last segment on where you live with gene and tony <laughs> 